What's up everybody? Jack here, and today I'm gonna teach you why Skillshare sucks, and you shouldn't teach on Skillshare as an instructor. Don't get me wrong, as a student, Skillshare is the cheapest option for the most content. As a student, Skillshare is by far the dominating course marketplace, in my perspective. However, as a teacher, you shouldn't even bother with Skillshare, okay? And this comes from me, who used to think very positively about Skillshare, and I have worked a lot with Skillshare over the previous four months. So before I get into the details, let me give you a little bit of my history with Skillshare so you can better understand where that I'm coming from, because I want to make sure that you do not make the same mistakes that I made. I don't want you to waste your time on this platform when they can pull the rug out from under you for something you didn't even do. And I can tell you exactly how to get this to happen to somebody else. That's how easy their system is to abuse, okay? But before we get into that, let me share a little bit of my history. So I have been trying to teach people how to earn money online using courses, right? I had an experience on Udemy where I got a course that did really well and basically has provided for me ever since and allowed me to move to Nicaragua from the US to reduce my cost of living and to make the money I earn go four or five times further than it does in the United States. My life was completely changed by course creation on Udemy. However, as I was trying to teach people on Udemy, I, I came to believe that Udemy is hard to get started on because you really need to have some kind of marketing strategy in order to do well on Udemy. So I started to look at other options and I came across Skillshare. And Skillshare I was fascinated with because you get one monthly payment of only 15 bucks, the price of one Udemy course, and you get every course on the entire platform. And there's even ways, which I've made tons of videos about, to get Skillshare for free for a whole year. As a student, by far, Skillshare is the best platform when it comes to amount of information gained and money spent. That I have no faith in, or I have no doubt about at all. However, as an instructor, problematic. In the beginning of my time on Skillshare, I noticed that even people without a YouTube audience, like I have a YouTube audience, right? So I have to be careful whenever I, uh, do videos about opportunities because some opportunities are unique to me because I'm a YouTuber and they're not available to you. But I want to help you earn money online through sharing information. So I have to make sure that I'm doing things that you can also do. So Skillshare was really appealing to me because you could just make a Skillshare course and it would get signups. It may not be that many, but you would get students, even if you don't do any marketing, right? Whereas on Udemy, you can publish a Udemy course, and if you don't do any marketing, it's completely possible for you to not get a single sign up in your first month. That is completely possible and quite likely. On Udemy, you have to bring that initial traffic before Udemy is going to push your course. It's called social proof, okay? On Skillshare, that's not the case. Skillshare is going to give you a lot of traffic straight away. And therefore, for beginners, people who don't have an audience, don't have a YouTube channel, it's a great option. Or at least I thought it was. But I was wrong. And it's really painful for me to make this video to you guys. Um, because as you can see, if you look on YouTube and you search for Jack Pittman Skillshare, I have a bunch of videos. One, how I earned $1,200, my first 60 days, my first month on Skillshare, an interview on another channel where I talk about Skillshare. Um, I was wrong about teaching on Skillshare, Skillshare Challenge, what is Skillshare about, uh, how to get a free Skillshare account for a year. And okay, you know what's so crazy? This video, I worked with Skillshare to publish. I published a video. They didn't like it. They emailed me. I took it down. And I got their permission to republish this video. They reviewed it for me and said it was okay. Okay, as soon as that happened, I let my guard down. I was like, oh, Skillshare's a great company. They're gonna care about me and they're gonna communicate with me when something goes wrong because they did about this YouTube thing. Unfortunately, I was dead wrong. A month after that, I got the death message. Hello, Jack. This is Skillshare's trust and safety team. Unfortunately, because we have found evidence of the behaviors listed below associated to your account, we have canceled your teacher payment and closed your account. Misrepresentation of enrollments, reviews, or referrals, attempts to artificially inflate class ranking, the characteristics of the teacher account overlap with the characteristics of student accounts enrolled in their class, the teacher's account is associated to networks of users exhibiting suspicious activity. This is the generic death message that means your account is banned and it is highly unlikely you will get it back. 
So what did I do? Everyone I talked to has been like, oh, well, you obviously did something wrong, Jack. You deserved this. But I didn't do any kind of artificial inflation whatsoever. All of my Skillshare stuff was created by making videos on YouTube about Skillshare and sharing my affiliate link there. And I also made five Skillshare courses. I worked my ass off for three or four months on this platform to just get this death letter, right? And I have had 12 back and forth emails. And I'm gonna show you some examples of what it looks like. All right, so I was like, hey, what is the appeal process for getting banned on Skillshare? I was banned outside of the three strike program without warning for something that I did not do. How do I prove to Skillshare that I did not make any attempts to artificially inflate my account? Please let me know what the next steps are. I was told that multiple referrals were created using the same credit card information, but I didn't do this. I've talked about Skillshare very positively for four months straight, and I don't know what to tell my audience anymore. Honestly, this has been a horrible experience. I even got charged again for membership when I can't even use Skillshare as a student. I sent an email showing the PayPal transaction. Why am I being charged when I can't even use my account? I can't even log into Skillshare to cancel the subscription. I messaged Skillshare about this on June 20th, 13 days ago. Skillshare hasn't responded, right? So I reached out to them. It took them 13 days and they didn't even respond until I sent this message out on July 3rd. And then I heard back from it five days later, 18 days after this message was sent, okay? And this is what they said. Hey Jack, I apologize in the delay in getting back to you. I've reached out to the support team to ensure your membership is canceled and you will not receive further charges from us. My team member reached out to PayPal and we were told that the subscription was canceled and the amount was refunded directly to you. However, this transaction does not appear to have been given an ID with Skillshare, meaning it's possible that it was held and never went through at all. The account action we took related to inflated referrals is permanent and we reserve the right to not reinstate your account. In order to maintain the safety of the platform, we are unable to share the criteria we use internally to determine fraudulent activity or network connections. I'm sincerely sorry this hasn't been a good experience for you. I'm willing to remain in touch to ensure the subscription issue is resolved, but I am unable to reinstate your Skillshare account. Okay? And like I said, this is one of many, many, many messages. Here's another example of one. Hi, Jack. Thanks for your response. This is a completely separate issue from your YouTube content. I'm writing because we noticed one of the following offenses associated to your classes. A high number of account referrals from the same IP and device. Please note that we consider teachers working in collusion with students to inflate their referral bonus to be in violation of our community guidelines. Please let us know if you have any questions. And here's what I said. Hey, I still believe this is a mistake. What can I do to prove that I have not made any attempts to work with anybody? Yada, yada, yada. Hello, Jack. Oh, look at this, right? Seven days later. Hello, Jack. Thank you for taking the time to get back to us. I'd like to clarify a few points. First, we are not upset whatsoever about your YouTube class. We've explained the issue with your uploads and appreciate the changes that you made. The reason that we've canceled your account is regarding disingenuous referrals. While reviewing teacher referrals, we noticed that a huge amount of referrals were made by individuals using the same credit card information to onboard to Skillshare, specifically through your referral bonus. In order to maintain the safety of the platform, we're unable to share the criteria we use internally to determine fraudulent activity or network connections. Okay? So this is what happens when I try and log into my Skillshare account. I go to Google, do the thing. The account associated with this Google account has been deactivated. You know what that means? That means no student and no teacher. I can't take any courses. I can't research any courses. And look, like I understand Skillshare needs a system in place in order to make sure that their, their systems aren't abused. I, I get that. But look, they're able to tell where the IP device came from. They're able to identify the device. They could literally just change their system's algorithm so that it doesn't allow payouts to more than one IP address per device. Boom, problem fixed. Don't have to ban the teacher. They just can't abuse it, okay? Super easy, right? Or they could have some kind of system where they just ban instructors from referring people. 
right? So you could still use the platform. You can still have your courses that you worked your ass off on on the platform. People can still take them, but no. Skillshare decides to just listen to an automatic bot system and ban you permanently, okay? And I'm now going to show you how you could get any Skillshare instructor banned just like I was because their system is really archaic and outdated. And this is why I don't recommend that you teach on Skillshare, okay? This is literally all that you would need to do to get an instructor just like me banned despite all of their hard work. So the reason I got banned on Skillshare was because multiple signups with the same credit card information came from the same IP address, okay? So if you listening to this video want to get somebody banned, all that you got to do is sign up 10 or 20 times using the same credit card number on somebody's affiliate link and Skillshare will ban them. There is no way for the account person to defend themselves unless they get a lawyer involved. It is a really archaic system, okay? And you may think, oh, I need to have multiple credit cards. I need to have multiple email addresses. It's not even that that simple. I'm going to use eBay as an example, right? Or it's not even that complicated. If you have a Gmail address, this is literally all you need to do. You have one email address and one credit card number. That is all you need to get another instructor banned, okay? So all you would have to do would be sign in, make an account with one email address. Sign up for the free trial under the instructor's affiliate link and do that again, and again, and again, and again, and again. From Skillshare, as far as they're concerned, the instructor's the one who receives the money, so they're the only possible person in the world who could cause this to happen, right? So it's their fault. They're gonna blame the instructor, even though literally anybody in the world can make this happen. So all you would do is sign up 10 times through somebody's affiliate link. And I'm just making 10 up. Maybe 10 isn't enough. Maybe you need to do it 20 times. But seriously, it's incredibly easy to make different email addresses. And you don't even need to. Like with Gmail, for example, look. Okay, I'm logged into an account, right? I'm going to click sign in here. I'm going to click uh, create a new account. And I'm going to make the account be Jack Pittman and Jack Dermot Pittman. Here's the trick, plus test1 at gmail.com. Let's make some generic bullshit password. Okay, so even though this email address is banned on eBay, right, and has already been used, I can just keep making new accounts like this, and then the information gets forwarded to the same Gmail account, okay? Because the email was Jack Dermot Pittman plus whatever you want. I could just do this, right, at gmail.com. To the service, it looks like a unique email address. But really what happens is this is the email address, and this is just some information that's put into the title of the video. So if I wait a while, it usually takes like five or 10 minutes, I would get a message from eBay on my main eBay, my main Gmail account saying, oh, I, you've created a new account, um, even though I signed it up like with this different email address, right? And the reality is with Skillshare, it wouldn't be that simple because they could just look and see that all of the email accounts were generated this way. And then they might actually give the person's account back because they could see that someone else abused it to get them banned. But if all you did was just use different email addresses, get 10 friends, use their email address, just use the same credit card, cancel all the charges so that you never get actually charged, boom, you can get another person banned. You can get them to receive this death message. Hello, this is Skillshare's trust and safety team. Unfortunately, because we've found evidence of the behaviors listed below associated to your account, we've canceled your teacher payment and closed your account. That's how easy it is to get somebody banned on Skillshare. And I hate to make this video. Like, I really don't like creating negative content. I don't like saying bad things about platforms. And in general, I believe that if I have something bad to say, I should just say nothing. But I did so much positive content about Skillshare. 
I'm literally misleading people with that content unless I make this video showing you how easy it is to get effed as an instructor on Skillshare. And I'm usually pretty good with like getting things resolved and dealing with customer service and talking to agents and not getting angry at them because I know they're just employees. But the reality is on Skillshare, that doesn't matter. Regardless to your performance as an instructor, you can easily be banned overnight even if you've never once gotten in trouble on the platform. And therefore, I cannot recommend that any of you teach on Skillshare. As a student, it's great. It is a great platform for students. But as a teacher, you should take your time and effort somewhere else. It's not worth it, okay? Don't make the same mistakes I did and drop your guard because you think that they're gonna communicate with you, right? I didn't get any email about, hey, you know, it looks like you're abusing this system. You realize 30% or whatever huge number of your referrals came from the same IP address. Skillshare didn't even give me a chance to explain myself. They just banned me. And the same thing happens to Chris, okay? So if you think, oh, Jack, this is just you, guess what? It's not, okay? So Chris is a YouTuber. Chris Lynn, da oh no, Daily Refinement. Chris published his two courses, okay, 41,000 subscribers, right? Big eBay channel. He published two courses about how to physically sell stuff on eBay, completely within Skillshare policy. Courses were doing really well. He referred 260 people to Skillshare in the first month, okay? That's $2,600. And then five or six days before his, the paycheck got initiated, boom, guess what email Chris got? The death email. Oh, and guess what? Two, no, three of my students who were teaching on Skillshare also got this death email. And if you take this email and you copy and paste it, you can find plenty of other people on Reddit, other bloggers who've gotten banned. This is common. And I, 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 I took time to think about making this video because I didn't just want to shit talk Skillshare. I don't want to be a person like this, okay? I'm going to show you a video on YouTube of somebody who this happened to, right? This one. How Skillshare scammed me, don't sign up. So if you watch this video, this guy is really irate and he blatantly says, I just logged into Skillshare to upload courses from Udemy. I never logged back into it. So obviously that's not what Skillshare wants you to do. And I watched this video months ago and I even made a video. Look, look, you wanna see something super ironic? Watch this. We're gonna go to YouTube and we're gonna sit, search for Jack Pittman, how people get banned on Skillshare. I even did a video explaining literally this exact death email that I got. And I made this video what? That content and how long ago? Let's see. March 9th, 2019. March, April, May, June, three months ago. Isn't that ironic? So in this video, I critique this person's YouTube video because he obviously isn't actually trying to use Skillshare as a platform. So I thought I was safe because I was making courses specifically for Skillshare. And I was even offering counseling services for people who wanted to teach on Skillshare. I was getting new teachers to teach onto the platform. I was making YouTube videos that were generating traffic about the platform, educating people about Skillshare. I was engaged on the platform. I was talking to other instructors. I was participating in forum posts. I was encouraging other instructors. I was sharing lessons that I was struggling with. I was doing everything that I perceived was right. And I thought that I was safe, especially after I got an email where Skillshare wanted to work with me to fix a video. I let my guard down completely after that because I thought that they would communicate with me if something went wrong, but I was completely wrong and I thought that I was special, but ultimately I got treated the exact same way as this dude did and all the people who show up if you Google this message and my students and Chris 
this isn't just unique to me. This is something across Skillshare as a platform, okay? And I'm sorry because I genuinely feel like I am misleading people because of all of the content that I have on Skillshare that talks very positively about it. So I'm making this video so that you guys can see what the truth is. And I've attached this video to every video I made about Skillshare because I don't want to take the videos down because a lot of them are really informative. And as a student, Skillshare is a great platform. But as a teacher, don't waste your time, guys. So that's the end of this video. If you are interested in talking to me and picking my brain, uh, I have moved on to teaching on Udemy and also using Google AdSense and YouTube stuff. I'm trying to fill the Skillshare-shaped hole in my life. I was expecting a thousand dollar paycheck and then boom, banned, right? Worked my ass off for four months straight, but nothing. C'est la vie. But if you are interested in learning more, you want to talk to me, I have options for you. You can go to calendly.com slash Jack Dermot Pittman. And here you can book time with me. If you would like to talk privately with me about anything, literally anything that I have information about, it's yours. It costs $20 per 30 minutes. If we talk for an hour, it costs 40 bucks. If we talk for 30 minutes, it's only 20 bucks. A lot of people charge $1,000 an hour or 100 or $200 an hour for this kind of information. I'm just charging you 20 bucks or 40 bucks an hour, right? Maybe it sounds like a lot to you, but honestly, if you don't want that, you can literally get the information for free just by scheduling a video with me and letting me record it and publish it to my YouTube channel. So I have ways for you guys to get any information I have in my head completely free. Or if you want to do it privately, then you got to pay just 40 bucks an hour. Really isn't that much money for information that you can use to earn money online, change your life, right? Like I live a life where I'm able to do anything that I want all day. All of my bills in Nicaragua are covered from passive income. It's true that I, I want to earn more money and I want to work, I want to have like the, the ability to literally go anywhere in the world. Right now I can only go to certain places for certain amounts of time and I can't literally just buy thousand dollar plane tickets. But I want to get to that point. I want to have a couple tens of thousands of dollars saved up. You know, I, I want to do that. And in order to do that, online information is critical. And if you are interested in having a similar life, then you can talk to me. And I will help you get it because ultimately the best way for you to get to the point that you want to be is to make eye contact and have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people who live the kind of life that you want. Okay? And also, I also have a course on Udemy about content creation. Um, right now, to record this video, I'm using this tool that you see. It allows me to quickly switch in between different camera angles. Say that I had multiple cameras, if I was really fancy, I could literally switch mid-recording just like that. I can also show you just my desktop. I can show you anything that I want. And guess how long it took for me to set this up? I literally went and I, cooked, I had a cup of coffee like this, came over here, sat down, pressed F10, boom. That's all it took because I've set OBS up to make it very convenient for me to record content, okay? This is content that could be used for a YouTube channel or from a Udemy course. All of the things that I know about OBS can be found in my OBS course. So if you're interested in that, it is this course right here. I will show you the layout real quick. It is about an hour, a little bit more than an hour, doesn't take very long, and it has assignments for every single section. Okay, so first we talk about some basic concepts that you need to understand in order to operate a live stream and record a video, just like this. We test your internet to see what you're capable of live streaming and see if there's any limitations. We install OBS. By the way, OBS works on Linux, Mac, or Windows, and it's completely free, so boom. You don't even need to pay anything to get involved in this. Like, yeah, my course costs money, but if you wanted to, you could just go to YouTube and then have some other fucker teach you how to use OBS, right? OBS tutorial. There's tons of them. There you go. Look at all this. Tons and tons of videos. Super easy, okay? But I've put a lot of effort into this course. I'm really passionate about it, and I've simplified it as much as possible, and I hold your hand and show you step-by-step step exactly what you need to do to get everything working, 
okay? Also talk to you about not wasting money on certain other things. We talk about the installation and setting up your audio, your microphone, your video, all of this, and then actually making your own live stream. So by the end of this course, you will be able to do anything you want with OBS. You could make this kind of video that I'm making right now. With one button, you can switch the scene while you're recording, just like I just did. You could set up multiple different camera angles and be able to make a really nice, polished video that looks like it was edited when you didn't actually do any editing. And I don't know if you've ever edited video, but if you can avoid editing video, you save yourself ludicrous amounts of time. It's pretty common for a four or five minute YouTube video to have been spent two or three hours of editing, okay? That is common. So if you can save time editing, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time when it comes to content creation because you can create new content instead of working with the same content, okay? And OBS, this program allows you to do that very, very effectively. So if you'd like to support me, I encourage you to check out the Udemy course. You can get it by clicking on a link in the description. It's $50, but if you want it for 10, just send me a message on Skype and I'll give you a coupon code. Um, you can find my email address by looking at my YouTube channel and then going into the about section and then clicking on business inquiry, or you can find a video where I share it. So I'm telling you this because I'm happy to give you the course cheaper as long as I know that you're willing to go out of your way a little bit because I can't give you the course cheap and then have you not ever even take it. That screws the course's analytics up. And I would much rather only have five people sign up in the first month for this course, but those five people actually take the course. That's better for me in the long run and for my Udemy course. If I have 100 people sign up and 90 of them don't even take the first lecture, that basically Fs my course analytics-wise. It's better to have a really high engagement and a really low amount of students than it is to have a really high amount of students but a really low engagement rate. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time, effort, and attention. And I'll see you guys in the next video.